It's on her poster. It didn't come out of nowhere. Focus it more on her stuff. There, I think that's better for right now. Lori's watching, so Lori's hybrid queen. So. Good. I'll get out of here. Are you ready for the last slack? Oh. Yeah. Oh, ready. Mm -hmm. Are you all excited? I'm really excited. Uh, my favorite thing to do is hybrid. Um, besides the digital, I like to find new ways to take it to another level and do things with my digital scrapbook kits that haven't been done before. Uh, so a lot of people are confused as to what hybrid means, and I think the best way to describe it is when you mix digital scrapbooking with glue and scissors, and you get hybrid, okay? There's a lot of different ways that you can do hybrid, and I think what pops into everybody's mind at first is printing out a bunch of pieces, cutting out a bunch of pieces, and gluing a bunch of pieces together. That's not really how I do it, because I think if I'm going to do that, then I might as well just traditional scrapbook and card make. So I try to do things where I do a lot of my work on the computer, and I send it off to be printed, and it's got a few finishing touches, and then it's all done. That's how I do it. But <clears throat> there's all sorts of ways to do it. I'm going to go over a whole bunch of information, and I have a whole bunch of really cool things to see, and I'll leave it all out. And if there's anything that I don't talk about how I made and you want to know, and ask me when we're done. Could you just define hybrid? Uh, yes, hybrid is when you mix digital scrapbooking with glue and scissors. Okay. That's my definition. I don't know if there's an official <laughs> definition for that. All right, so some of the basics of hybrid are uh, your supplies. I brought a few things. How many of you uh, were traditional scrappers before you went digital? How many of you were only digital? That was probably a better question. Okay. So I was also a traditional scrapper before digital, and actually I wasn't even a scrapper, I was a card maker. And so uh, when I made cards, I, I really had a love for making like 3D items, like boxes and bags and bag toppers and tags and invitations and things like that. And I would actually make, hand make the invitations for my kids' birthday parties, the folded cards with the 10 layers, with the all stamped. And I would make 25 or 30 of them, and I usually okay. count exactly how many, so I didn't ever make more than I needed to because <laughs> it was so time consuming. Now, I create a little card here, I tell Sam to print 50 of them, and they're done. And then they all coordinate with the team. So, you probably have a lot of the basic supplies that you need for hybrid right in your scrap area in your house. A paper cutter, I have this fun one here, uh, it's got the cutting blade and a scoring blade. A scoring blade is really important uh, to get really nice folds, especially if you're going to make boxes and things like that. And the cutter is nice and sharp. Good pair of scissors. I had my scissors here there. They have this really nice tiny point for getting into detail. Okay? And they're really, really sharp. And they're made for cutting paper. 
Um, I know that's a really silly thing, but I tried to cut some of these out with a bad pair of scissors, and this is literally choose the paper to be. So, you want a good pair of scissors. A printer or a place to print. Good quality paper if you're going to print at home. Uh, photo paper that matches the ink in your printer. So if you use an Epson printer, you should use Epson ink, Epson paper. If you use HP, it should all be HP. That's how you're going to get the best print quality. If you're printing at home. Uh, some sort of adhesive. We're going to use double-sided tape today. Adhesive. Blue. Tape. We're going to use double-sided tape today, but uh, I like to use Mod Podge a lot too. We're going to talk about that a little bit more. Um, and if you've ever seen, it's a little messy, but you can get some cool things when you play with that. Uh, that really thin red line tape, that's a really handy supply to have if you're going to make boxes and bags and things like that because that stuff is the strongest stuff I've ever used and it'll keep those seams together on your boxes and your bags. Where do you do that? Can. I've seen it at Michael's. You can buy it online. Is it called red line? Some of it's called red line, some of it's called sticky strip, some of it's called tacky tape. It comes in three different widths. It does yeah. come in multiple mm -hmm. widths, depending mm -hmm. on your project. And it might come, I don't remember where I got it, but I know I bought it and it was a three pack and it has a small, like all three widths in this big package. And a little bit goes a long way, so even though it is a little bit more strong. expensive. But it's double-sided? Mm -hmm. It is. And you peel the one side and you stick it and then you stick your things together and you cannot pull them apart. And if you do, you will rip your project to shreds. Mm -hmm. That's really handy for when you're putting things together. Um, and then it's big Zacto knife, too, for cutting out things in the middle. Um, <clears throat> so one thing you're going to find out about me is that I like to do things on a budget. So I'm going to be telling you these most cost-effective ways to do things, and that just kind of pops up over and over again in everything that I do, is that I like to do it cheap, but I like it to look like it wasn't cheap. And I also like it to look like maybe I bought it. But I'm coming to the time in my crafting career where people don't really believe that I made it anymore, and that's kind of upsetting too. So, I always stick a sticker, handmade, by Amanda Wittenborn. And I put my web address on there because otherwise people don't think I need it. So I guess it's a good problem. All right, so uh, just a little bit about printing. For your printer, you don't have to have a 12 by 12 printer to do hybrid projects. I don't own a 12 by 12 printer. Um, most of the projects that you can make can be printed out on 8.5 by 11. Um, if you want to do bigger projects, then you can go see so. Uh, I can't show you printer settings. I had kind of planned that, but I don't have a printer installed. But if you go into your advanced printer settings, you can um, you can choose the type of paper that you're going to be printing on. You want it to match the type of paper that is actually going through your printer. So if you have it checked that it's high gloss paper and you're putting in an ultra smooth paper, you're not going to get the best print quality when you do it. The other thing that's really handy in that printer settings area is you can pick, there are like five options, draft, text, photo, best photo, there's maybe one more. Um, I do a lot of printing in draft first so that I don't use up all my ink and do something wrong or it's the wrong measurement or it doesn't fit the way I thought it was going to. When you print it in draft, it literally is like just a, a very small coating of ink if your printer barely uses any ink, but then you still get to see it. Or I'll do it in grayscale and print it out that way first so that it saves my ink when I'm testing things out. Let's see what else did I say? Oh, keep your printer in good shape. Uh, there's a maintenance tab in there where you can do nozzle checks and clean the print heads and things like that. Again, if you're going to be printing from your printer and you tell it to print and all of a sudden it prints this 8.5 by 11 project out and you've got stripes down the middle of it, you've just really wasted ink, you've wasted your time because you have to print it again and probably could have resolved that issue if you would have just you know, cleaned the print heads before. So make sure you're taking good care of your printer if you're going to print at home. But remember, I said I do things on a budget, so I very rarely print at home because ink costs as much as it does to send my child to school. So I 
go with printing places. So places that print, Staples, Office Depot, Office Max, Sam's Club, Walmart, Target, you name it. The two top places that I use to print are Sam's Club. They do almost 90% of what I do. Uh, that is the cheapest that you can get any photo printed. I think um, an 8 by 10 is $1.49. Uh, 20 by 30s are $8.95. You can fit a lot of cool hybrid stuff on a 20 by 30 for $8.95. Um, and I've also used, sorry. When you print that off at Sam's, does it print photo? Is it like a yes. photo then? It's not it like is. a paper. Yes, that actually, that's one of the first things I meant to mention was that I know this is going to sound really silly, but remember that your digital scrapbooking stuff is just a photo. So anything you can do with photos on Shutterfly or anywhere else, you can do with your digital scrapbooking. So I have a photo example here. How many of you made, have made a photo mug before? How many of you have digital scrapbooked a photo mug? Interesting. You could have a raffle ticket. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so all I did was I made a scrapbook page and I uploaded that as my photo to Sam's Club and now I have my cute little uh, scrapbook page on there that says mommy so I know that it's Sam's Club. Because that's really important. So you don't have to scrapbook. I mean if you if you want to just put the date or the name or a text on your photo and then upload the photo, it could be printed right in Shutterfly. So then that opens up all the other items that Shutterfly offers like Blankets and uh, canvas bags and puzzles. Okay. Anything that you can digital scrapbook, as long as you do it the right size, you can do that into a, an item that you can have. So you could have a digital scrapbook page as a puzzle. It doesn't have to just be one photo. Maybe you want the puzzle to have five photos on it. So you make a little collage, upload the collage as your one photo and there you can turn it into your puzzle. So just remember that all your digital scrapbooking is just a photo. So when I print at Sam's Club, it prints out as a photo, but it's all my little scrapbook pieces. And I'll show you how I've laid out, like how I laid out the science fair board to print all those individual pieces. Do you have any recommendations on places that print not as photos? Um, I was actually just going to say that, and I got off on a tangent. Um, I have used Office Max. And I like Office Max because remember I like to do it on a budget. They always have coupons, so you can always do a little web search for a coupon for your printing. I've gotten ten dollars free there before, or fifty percent off your order, and they print eight and a half by eleven. Um, you can choose a variety of papers, but their color prints I think are fifty nine cents. And so I'll show you some other things that I've made that Office Depot has printed. I think they do a good job. I think the most important thing is if you're really interested in doing some things like this and uh, going all the way is to take the same file and send it off to multiple places and see who's you like the best. I'm happy with Sam's. I always have been. Um, I was happy with the quality that was coming from Office Max as well. I have not tested everybody. I did get some stuff at Kinko's and I, they are pricier than the other places and I really didn't think that they were. I didn't even think they were as good. So that was my opinion of Kinko's. Pricey, not as good. Have you tried um, I haven't tried Staples. I just went to some place that was close to me. So, um, Shutterfly is awesome for, to me, I mean, there, I'm sure there's other places out there, but Shutterfly has the best blank selection for digital scrapbookers. <laughs> so they have the most options. Yeah. Am I not on? Okay. Shutterfly. So I made the picture and I uploaded it as a JPEG to Shutterfly and then they made them they made them up. I'm not that good. But I can do other things. Okay, so here I am in Shutterfly and Shutterfly um, is a little irritating because to get to this really cool blank digital scrapbooking section you have to actually have to search digital scrapbooking. You can't find this stuff if you don't do that search. At least I don't know how. So when you search for digital scrapbooking, you
you have this little thing here, digital scrapbook case. And this will pull up all the cool blank options that Shutterfly offers. Is Shutterfly the only one of the groups that Shutterfly is one of the, well, it's the only place that I've found that offers as many blank items as they offer. Um, other photo places for cards and stuff like that, they'll let you do one photo on the front of the card, but like it has to have text at the bottom or it puts a white frame around it. Okay. Shutterfly yeah. is the yeah. only yeah. one that allows the full card to be a photo. So they're not going to crop it, they're not going to put anything white on there or anything like that. So you could do full 4x8 cards, 5x7, five 5x7 by seven, five by seven folded greeting cards. Your scrapbook pages can be done there. Not the most economical. Notebooks, stickers, okay? And that's their blank selection. That's not to say you can't do a puzzle there, because you sure can. Um, you can do a mouse pad. So here, I digital scrapbooked a mouse pad for my dad. He calls his lake house Wonkers Lodge, so I made this little logo. We're also putting it as an embroidered image on um, sweatshirts so that everybody can have a little matching sweatshirt. I made him a deck of cards. Again, you can make photo cards. Why do they just have to be your photo? They can be whatever you want them to be with your digital scrapbook. It's fine. These are from Shutterfly. <laughs> traditional look so not everything is flat. You don't have to do it. 
you're going to see when you get your box that this image is actually flat on there too. So if you don't want to put the popped up piece, you don't have to. You know, but it just adds another dimension. Oh, this is what you're making. <laughs> just in case you didn't see it on the stuff to scrap the door. And a set of matching cards. Okay. Glue dots. Oh, glue dots are really um, handy for like if you want to add buttons or ribbons or things like that, tiny things. Those glue dots are just as strong as that red line tape and they're just already in a dot form so you push a button on and it picks up the dot and you put it right back on. And my favorite, Mod Podge, which we've already talked about being messy, but well worth the effort. So Zach had a, a scientist, monster scientist birthday party in January. And one of the coolest things I, well, that I feel was the coolest things I made from was this cool scientist clipboard. So I just made, I, I measured, okay, I forgot to say you need a good measuring tape. And so I measured the clipboard, figured out what the size was, I designed it, I had Sam print it, I painted my clipboard black, and then I mod touched it on there. So now it's totally on there. Okay, you can't ruin it. The paper can't come up, it can't get ripped. He can use it over and over. <laughs> this also involves the Mod Podge. This was my practice one to make sure that what I was about to do was going to work. <laughs> so I bought, you know, the cheaper canvas and just an 8x10. Okay. How many of you have seen Kansas prints before? How many of you think they're stunningly gorgeous? And how many of you are willing to pay $75 for one this time? I made nine of these, and I made them for about $40 for all nine. Okay, so I'm going to share with you how I did that. So pretty much uh, go to Michael's and find what Kansas size, sizes they have. And whatever you want. Sure, use your quarter percent. Uh-huh. Walk to my room. Okay. They sell canvas. Um, I wanted 12 by 12, and they happened to have a pack of six 12 by 12s on sale for 11 dollars I picked it up. Uh, so then I knew 12 by 12 photo. Okay, but I did an 8 by 10 too. And I did color, and I did black and white, so you can see. Um, with Mod Podge, I'm going to just tell you this right now. I have printed things from my printer and tried to mod podge them to something, and that ink, no matter how I do it, bleeds all over the place. So no matter if I've printed it as a photo, mm -hmm. or if I've printed it on printer paper, if it comes out of my printer, it bleeds with the mod podge. So the only way I've gotten anything to work with mod podge and digital scrapbooking is to have a photo printer print it. You are welcome to try it. I've tried it. I wonder if you could take like a, like a spray something but see, that's the whole point of the Mod Podge. I mean, yeah. for $1.49, I was okay with that. Yeah, so, the bleeding, yes, ma'am. Um, I, I, I have that problem as well, because I tried to do it and it smeared, and then I went on Facebook and I found this Mod Podge company, and they pointed me to a paper, Epson Matt presentation paper. Still on that, right? I Mod Podged it. It works beautifully. All right, so maybe it's, 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 it's the paper that I found. So you probably be careful. Yes. Not all about being careful. I've I've mod at home, and I found uh, you have to let it dry for at least 24 hours, yeah, if not 48. No, but it, it smears as soon as it you put it on. So I just I had go with the fifty and elsewhere because I when I want to do a project, I want to do it now. I don't want to do it 24 or 48 hours from now. That's me. So what I did was I picked up these canvases and I painted the edges black, okay, because they come white. So all I did was paint it. I got my pictures. I printed my 12 by 12 pictures. And these canvases, they're not perfect. So when it comes around, you can see the edges, they're not perfect. So from, from where you're at, they look perfect, right? Um, so you just, you have to line up your photo. Each of my photos needed probably like an eighth and an inch trimmed here or there. So line it up before you put any glue on anything, okay? Then you're going to coat the canvas with the Mod Podge. You're going to lay your photo down, and you're going to smooth it out. 
Okay, so the best way that I did that was I put it down, I smoothed it, you know, I pinched the corners, and then I put it on my, I have kind of like, it's not marble, but it's kind of smooth like that, and then I, I just really pressed and rubbed. It's okay if you get glue coming off the side, because once it's on there, then you're going to take the Mod Podge and you're going to paint over it. Using a foam brush is usually the best, and you can see my strokes. I wanted to see strokes like that, because that's part of the canvas look. Um, but then you also have to be careful that you do your strokes nice. You can't just, you know, put, right. So they're all going one direction. All of my photos have it all going the same. So on the wall and the front <laughs> of it, all of those little brush strokes are the same way. Okay. So that's that. And let me show you what I did with my nine Oh. Okay. So I just made nine different. I made them all black and white pieces in our living room. And then I bought a wall vinyl to go over it. And it's probably my favorite thing that I've made in my house. I just really love it. Can you hold them up? Oh, I have a photo girl for that. <laughs> I'm not good at that. Okay. I'm good at taking her beautiful photographs and doing cool things on them. Um, so, yes, it was just a photo, but there's no reason that you couldn't put a scrapbook page on canvas and give it as a gift. And it could be any, any size. I mean, um, you could take those wood blocks. They have those wood canvases, and you could put a photo on there, too. And remember that photo is a loose term for whatever you can save as a JPEG. It could be a scrapbook page, it could be multiple photos. For me, I wanted to focus on the one photo for each. Amanda, I think you're reading. Of all I don't think I have this. Maybe. I'm sorry, I have my husband. I don't even know if that was okay. I work with Mod Podge, I always like bubbles up and wrinkles and stuff like that. I mean, do you have that problem with? I found that, yes, I do have that problem. Um, I found that most of the time when it does bubble up, it does eventually smooth itself out if you don't mess with it too much. And you have to find the right balance of how much glue you're putting on. Right, because if it gets too saturated, it'll like tear and... Yeah, I find the more glue that's on there, the kind of the more it bubbles. But also, it's hearing that base layer before you put the glue over the top. That's a really critical step. So you want, you don't want too much glue underneath. You want it really adhered well. Let that sit for a little bit, and then go for your top piece. And then any bubbles usually do work themselves out. As or wait 24 hours in between. <laughs> or if you have infinite patience, like me, you can wait 24 hours before completing your project. <laughs> I do not. I want it done now, and I want to hang it on my wall and enjoy it instantly. Okay. All right. So a little bit more about cutting and scoring. Oh yeah, there. Uh, I do want to mention. Um, Deb and I were talking a little bit. She's got the silhouette cameo. Uh, that's one of those new fancy cutting machines out there. I don't own any of those. I hand cut everything. But these new cutting machines, you can you can pull in a digital scrapbooking element from your kit, and you could tell it to cut around it. So you could print that out, and then you feed it through your little cutter, and it cuts perfect line around your element. It'll even cut like the insides out too, right? Yeah. Uh, so I would love to have something like that. You could cut vinyl and make. Art yes, vinyl wall art and things like that too. So there are cutting machines and you can do cool stuff with that. Um, like think making a box template, okay? And you make your digital box on the computer and then you have your machine cut it out for you. Uh, but then if you make your box, you're going to have to score it, okay? So you need to, you know, make sure you have a scoring book. So that's really important too. All right, so let's talk about cards and invitations. This is probably where my addiction first started with the Feast Invites. There are all sorts of ways to make cards. I'm going to show you all of them, and you can decide what you like the most. You can do, well, I'll tell you what. 
I did. I I saw that blank invitation on Shutterfly. I'm like, oh wow, I'm gonna make my blank invitation. Would we all see how much that was? Forty-four cents a card. Uh, when I got it, it was very similar to this, which I got from Sam's Club for thirty cents. So I don't ever do these blank five by seven photo cards because all they are is a five by seven photo. So I don't know why they're calling it a card. Okay, so this blank photo card, don't be fooled. <laughs> Any place you can get a photo printed at five by seven, it's a card. All right. So here's an example, and what I like here, this is my friend. I made this for my friend. Uh, she rounded the corners of the photo so it didn't look like. I just think it looks just a little bit more official, you know? There it is. Uh, here's the matching to the scientist party. But you can see examples of that. That's why I, when I switch to digital, I do keep my corner rounder. My keep your corner rounder. Because um, when the kids pull pictures from back, I round the corners to make it look more. They do. They look more official. Um, this is, well, this is a 4 by 6 I'll talk about this. And again, it's just printed as a photo. Four by sixes are 13 cents at Sam's Club. <laughs> so these are just. This one was printed um, like at Walgreens. You can see the gloss are different. Oh, they do, man. They know. When I come to pick stuff up, they're like, there she is. I met a lady the other night and she saw my science poster sticking out from the envelope. She was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and she just got me in for a networking night. Oh uh, I did, uh, you're going to see a lot of Dr. Seuss stuff. Um, I did a Dr. Seuss birthday in October for my youngest. So I have his invite and his thank you. Hey, come on, why would you buy the ugly cards at Walmart and Shutterfly when you can make them with your favorite scrapbooking kit? I told you, in my dish is my addiction. Yeah, I think anybody at Costco has a bigger size. They do. Like seven by nine, half by six, I think. Yeah, and it comes with envelopes. You have to buy fifty, though. Yeah, Costco does too. Sam's does it with envelopes too. They don't have that bigger size. But I mean, that's where I get all my Christmas cards. I get all my Christmas cards that size, and there is a blank one on the site. That's see that. You just you just put the blank one, upload your photo. Oh, she does it for me. I only get back on the first one. <laughs> There's just some more. These are just five by seven that I made in the station. Uh, okay, so that's one way you can do it. Another way you can do it, which this I, I love about Shutterfly, is the folded card. And I have bought these. Dollar eleven right now is not too bad, but I'm not going to buy the docket. What's really cool about their folded card is Shutterfly gives you the opportunity to do the full front and the full top and bottom. Oh, that's right? Yeah. Really? I did not see yes. Can you do the back? Um, now you can. Okay. So this I did yeah. two years ago. I did my Christmas card so but yes, this was my back this year. Okay. So how much you cards? Right now these are a dollar eleven. But if you wait for the $10 off coupon when you purchase $30, <laughs> I told you, I do things on a budget. All right, so they, I, I really like these. And, you know, I think they're really great. And I've made some just plain thank yous because you can always use the thank you card, right? Um, and then our Christmas card this year, probably my most favorite one I've made. Okay, so that's two ways. You can just do a flat 5x7, you can do the folded 5x7. You can do the option, I didn't bring an example because I've never done it. I've done it once and I don't like it. Um, you can print out the full card on your printer. Who wants to do that? So you can, you can print out the card and cut it and score it. The reason I don't do it 
is because I could get one 5 by 7 folded card on an 8.5 by 11, or I could get one standard size card because of the issues with lining paper up. You're not going to get two cards out of an 8.5 by 11. So you're only going to get one card, and I'm just not going to do that. So I don't do that. So I didn't even bring them in. <laughs> or, my favorite option for a budget. My favorite is the folded side myself. So um, is to make the card front and put the card front onto a folded card. And that's what we're doing today. So you're going to get hands on experience. All you got to do is know your card sizes. Okay, that's probably the most important thing. Uh, standard card size. Now I should have wrote this down. Five and a half by four and a quarter. Okay, so that would make your layer in four by five and a quarter. Well, what do we know that's already four inches of four by six, right? So what I do is I design on a four by six, but I design it four by five and a quarter, and I cut a little white strip off, and it fits right on the top of my card with a beautiful layer right around the side. I did it digitally. I printed 120 of these for here, and it only took me a few seconds instead of making all of these handmade cards. So print, pass that around. There it is, card front to print. So you can see it, how it's laid out there. It's on a four by six. But see, there's that strip of white. When they came, I just cut the strip of white off. And I got my perfectly sized card front. So when I design things like this, I said I designed it on a 4x6, but I lied. I actually designed it the size I want it. Okay, so this is my official card front here. And I would take that and I would design right on that. And I would do whatever I wanted to do. I would save it like that. So let's pretend I did that. Okay. Oh, look at me. I just designed the four by the five and a quarter. Okay, I saved it. Oh. Okay. And so then what I do is that I open up my four by six, <coughs> or a new four by six, and I take my design that I did, and then I line it up. I save it again, and I always just put hard front to print. The reason I do this is because what if I want that card front and I don't want that strip on it? Okay, what if I just want it the size it is, like I'm going to lay it out some other way, like for a class of 30 women? Okay, so I, I kind of needed, well, not that particular one because I printed that as a 4 by 6 but like the sides of the box, I didn't, I didn't want it just how it was because I needed to print tons of them. Okay, so I saved just my box size so that I could put it on a 20 by 30 and line it up and print as many as I needed. So I saved it just as the way it was so that I am free to, to do it however I want. Like if I wanted to make one box, I could fit that on a 16 by 20 and I could just pull up each piece and print out one 16 by 20. Or like if I'm going to make it to sell in my stuff to scrap store in tint. I will want those pieces not attached to, you know, white strips and stuff so that I can line them up so that I can put them on an 8.5 by 11 if I want to print them out on pictures. So whenever you're going to make something like that, always save it the size that it actually is and then move it to whatever size photo you're going to print it at. So can you like, pick up a piece that you just gave you a big sheet They do. They give me a big 20 by 30. I'll show you a 20 by 30 in a little bit. Oh, here's something else cool I did. For the thank yous for my son's science birthday, I did a 4 by 6, but then I did another one on the back, and I just taped them together so that he could write dear. Thank you so much for celebrating his birthday with me and for the 
really love it. So it gave him an opportunity to write a little bit without having to write a ton. And it was just two four by six prints, which cost me a quarter. For a thank you card. I mean, go to the party store and buy a pack of eight for what, four ninety nine? <laughs> Still matches your party, right? Hey, you ladies are creative. There's no reason for bought invitation. Are you going to all like hear me talking to you when you go to the store and buy invitations? You'll be able to ring through you that I'm not creating my own invitation. Got it. All right, so um, this was the only example I had, which I was kind of sad about, but... When I send an invitation, I make matching return address labels and address labels to the party. Well, because I can. <laughs> okay? And so can you. Uh, all you have to do is have the template, and ladies, the Avery site, you know, mm -hmm. those good old people that make labels, they have PFC templates right on there. All you have to do is download it, open it up, fill it in with your return address label, and print the sheet on your printer. I'm you. Cool stuff to be done. So all I have is the one return address, but you know, um, there was a matching address label. I do it for each. Oh, and then for this party, I have a funny story. Uh, because of his mad science and monster science, I had like little caution, warning, toxic stickers. And I stuck those all over the envelope. And then I thought, are they going to deliver these if they say toxic? <laughs> <laughs> so then I was worried because uh, cards and photos and things like that. Uh, you have to account for bleed. And I didn't understand what bleed was for a very long time. And I'm going to show you what it is so that you don't have a sure. mistake. But I'm sure you have. I'm sure you've printed stuff out and the edges have been chopped off. And it's too long. Send something to Sharp Line and ruin it. I called them and I was so mad one time and it was all my fault. It was all my fault uh, because I didn't understand what bleed was. So on these two cards, you can see that the right and left edges are not, the dark pink is not the same size as the top and bottom. And in my design, it totally was because why would I do that? I wouldn't. Okay. So I'm going to show you how you can have those perfect edges right now. Go back to our good buddy Shutterfly. And if you see this little link right here, print your digital scrapbook, design specs and templates. Man, they have thought of all of it for us. Okay, they give you templates with the bleed edge so that you don't have anything chopped off your scrapbook layout or your notebook or your card. So here I'm in the photo book section. Here's the card layout. All you have to do, design specs and templates. And right here, 5x7 greeting card in PFC. I already own that. <laughs> and all it is, is it gives you these guides. Oops, sorry. Got my grid. OK, see those? Can you see those? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, but they're giving you the edge there. And what you want to do is you want to make sure that none of your text goes into that edge. And if you have a square design like those cards I'm passing around, you want to account for that. This is the fashion from Shutterfly? Yes. <laughs> On the Shutterfly site, right here. Design specs and templates, and you can download these templates that account for bleed. Do they have it from like, to like They do. All right, so I'm just going to open up. Does each, each company have a different bleed though? I mean, you could use that for Sam's or? Uh, you know what, they probably do, but I'll be honest with you, I've used that template for Sam's before and everything's come out okay too. So I think if you're just, I've even kind of just eyeballed it myself and pulled in like a little eighth of an inch or more and just made sure, and I've never run into a problem by using that. 
you still put paper, the paper still extends that far. Just you don't yes, you need design, design on that. You need design in that area. Because it might show, but it might not. You know, like the ink is how the ink is going to spread, which is what we're accounting for. I don't know what it is exactly. There's a really official measurement here from Shutterfly, but I don't have it. So what I would normally do when I was making a card before is I would, you know, put that on there and be like, oh, there's my shape. Well, you can see that that's going to be a problem when it comes to the bleed because it's not really going to give me any of my black color, right? So let's just pretend here. Okay. So let's pretend that that's my card front. So what I would do is I would just size that down let that back paper extend into the bleed area, but also around my image. So I have a nice outline here, but that background paper extends out into the bleed area. That way, it's going to be beautifully centered on my card, and I don't have to worry because I'm not putting anything near that bleed edge. If there's extra black around it that's, you know, thicker than that, that's, that's okay with me because my image isn't being chopped off, or if you saw those cards, you saw how that edge was not, didn't match the top and the bottom, and that kind of stuff drives me crazy. So if you make sure that you watch for the bleed like that, it's just that very background paper extends out the back, and then all of your design needs to neatly fit inside. Don't put this piece of paper on those blue lines and think you're going to get a nice black outline, because you probably won't. So it needs to have, you know, almost pretend like that's not there, but it still needs to be there for printing. That's probably not the most in-depth explanation of bleed, but do look it up and learn a little bit more about it if you are going to print things, and especially if you're printing invitations and stuff, you don't want your lettering or the last number of your phone number getting chopped off, and then you're all mad at whoever printed it for you. Okay. So, oh, absolutely. Yes, if you're going to be printing your layout. Oh, yes. And Shutterfly's got the templates for your layouts, too. Right here, photo book. Design specs the templates right there, 12 by 12 in Photoshop. And they give you the guidelines. All right, so I think when people think of hybrids, this is the kind of stuff that they think of and, like, the kind of stuff I just don't do often. It's like a template like this, where you can buy this box template. It's got instructions, and basically you're just going to flip your papers to the different areas, and then you print it out, and you assemble a box. I'm not going to talk much about how to do this because that's just not how I do things. But there's one I made. So I took that template, I designed it. That was to be cut out. There were more pieces to this particular template at the bottom. So you'll see those out in stores for sales, templates for making hybrid boxes and bags and things like that. Uh, but I just think, why buy a template like that when you can do so much more on your own and you don't need templates that cost $4? Question. Yeah. That photo card that you have on your what kind of pen did you use? A Sharpie. A Sharpie. Yeah. Okay, so not using templates, that's my favorite way to go. All right, so things I've done. This was a poster for Josh's birthday. I put it in the 16 by 20 frame. In, uh, about the mantle. I will make sure to show you that. Yeah, again, it's 16 by 20 and Sans, I think, is like 595 maybe. Mm -hmm. So that was just a nice thing to do. Well, this, I love that poster, so. Yeah. Um, this was one of my favorite things I did for Josh, too, was because I had people sign it for him when he came in. So I wrote a little poem. I copied a poem. <laughs> Changed it for Josh. I put his picture in there, and then we had Sharpie. 
to sign the book. And then there's something to have forever. It's all about that kind of thing. Yeah, I just taped it on the inside of the book. I'm a big fan of um, decorating for the birthday parties. And then he has this in his room now. This is over. Do you make the books and I make pages. I put them in the This is a 20 by 30. And I did this to go over the mantle. $8.95 at Sam's. Cheapest 20 by 30 at Tom. <laughs> yeah, can you tell I do love birthdays? Are you for hire? I can't tell you how many times I get asked that, and my answer is always. <laughs> I love my babies. Okay, so I put that in the frame, and then you can see the other one. <laughs> Ladies, this is my thing, okay? So you don't have to do what I do. Well, thank goodness our kids don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Oh, nothing makes me really more happy than throwing a really cool birthday party for my kids. You know, I thought her probably a pretty bad mom in other ways. So. How long does it take you? Oh. Oh my God. Oh my God. Hey, this is photos. All I did, they're four by four. I just made, you can see the background is all the same. I changed the letter. I saved the 4x4 four four and then I put them all on a 20x30 and printed them and cut them. And all I did was slice it with the X Acto knife and thread a ribbon through. They're not taped. Well, maybe they are. Yeah, they're taped. <laughs> and then I hang it on the mantle. I mean, but they're, you know. So when you first have a 20x30 and supposedly you're hanging all pieces, what's the best way to cut it since you can't just, you know? One of the, yeah, I cut it down. So, yeah, I just use scissors, cut it down to manageable pieces, and then um, I uh, then I use my paper cutter for the rest. All right, so let's see what else I have. Uh, I've done things like bottle wrappers because why are they supposed? You know why? Why not do it? I mean, that was that was something I printed at uh, Office Max, eight and a half by eleven, made little wrappers. Measured around the bottle and the height, set up my document so that it was the size I needed it to be, then moved it once it was made onto an eight and a half by eleven. Cupcake wrappers. Okay, so I had little thing one and thing two cupcake wrappers. Do you have a picture of cakes on your I don't, because I'm really bad about posting these pictures to things. I, I know. Well, you posted your mom, the mom, the... I did the do the science story. one. I did, science because part. I did that for a lot of uh, I, I make pop bottle wrappers, because why have it be the Coke label when it could match the birthday party? Yeah. <laughs> oh. There's some more wrappers I did. Those are just marshmallows on top, twisted. And then the cool wrapper is what makes it really look like popcorn. Those are cupcakes? Yeah, those are cupcakes. Hey, look at those cupcakes, I should have said. How do you bake them and make them? Yeah. Oh. That was for a little bake sale. I bet they went really well. So, I think they did, yeah. Actually, I made spaghetti and meatball cupcakes, too. And uh, as we were walking down the hall, one of the little girls goes, there's spaghetti and meatball cupcakes in there. <laughs> I took some wood blocks. You can play with this later. I took some wood blocks and I, um, they're six sided, so I measured them when they were put together and I made six different little scrapbook pages and then glued them around. This is a time consuming project, but it's fun to play with and it's a puzzle, so it's actually kind of a difficult puzzle. <laughs>
Okay, this is probably my most favorite thing I've ever done. And it was for Valentine's Day, and it was five things I love about, and he wrote who it was about. This one was Dad. I'm still waiting for Dad to have him fill out the mom book. <laughs> I know, I'm so sad. I, I asked him, like, could you please send fill him out before the retreat so I could take the mom book. So it's just this one, ride my bike with him. You know, in his own little handwriting. And all I did was I took it to the office store. They put the coil binding in the little plastic top on there. I think it cost me $2 to have it down. It's just four by six photos. This book all together cost me like $3, and it's the most precious thing I've ever given. But not I have not received it. I have not received it. Some more fun things. I made um, soccer trading cards when he was on the soccer team. Put his little stats on the back. His age, his height, his weight, his shoe size. <laughs> Laminated them. They make them more official. Uh, you can do magnets. You can print on magnet paper. I've bought magnet paper and printed on magnet paper. Or you can get magnets made through Shutterfly. For Zach's science's birthday, all the kids got a little science's name badge with their name on it. And I have a little background with that match. Again, I told you, any way I can incorporate digital scrapbooking into something I can make, I do it. It's a little ridiculous. One last time.